I'm beginning to realize these things are bad for my mental health. It's not good for me to come out here and see these things. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Monday, June 5th here in South Georgia. And today I'm going to be giving you an update on all the tomatoes we have growing out here in our backyard gardens. We've got some really good looking plants and we've got some really sorry looking plants and we're going to cover them all. So let's start out with some good news and we'll talk about the good looking tomato plants we have. And those would be these two rows of determinate tomatoes here. We've got red snapper right there. We've got roadster right there. Now I told y'all I was going to show you every time I added a new line to our Florida weave trellis, but just haven't been able to keep up with it on the videos. I think we're on our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight lines of string on those red snappers there. And I think seven or eight lines of string on those roadsters. You can see the red snappers there are a good bit taller than the roadsters are. Red snapper, from my experience, tends to be one of the taller determinate varieties. If you feed it well, I don't know that I've ever had them get this tall. Some of these plants right here are almost up to my neck. So five foot tall, maybe five and a half foot tall in some spots. Now, none of these have ripened yet, but the plants are loading up. There's a pretty little cluster right there. And if we were to try to do a comparison right now between these two varieties, which we've compared before, we can see red snapper plants are taller, a little more bushy, a little more robust. We have lost a couple of the roadster plants. A couple of them look like this right here. So plant vigor, the award seems to go to red snapper. But that doesn't always mean more production. These roadster plants seem to be a little more loaded, but that could be because we have so much foliage here, we can't see the tomatoes quite as well as we can over here on this roadster row. And if we get over here on the other side of this roadster row, we can see some really nice fruit formation going on some really pretty tomatoes starting to develop there this variety usually makes a pretty big slicer it looks like we're well on our way to getting some of those so minus those couple roadster plants there these two rows are looking really good and the florida weave trellis is holding these plants up really well as I've always said, this is the easiest way to grow tomatoes if you're growing more than just a few plants. Now, there are quite a few people that seem to have a lot of trouble with the Florida weave, getting it to work for them. And I don't really know why, except for the fact that maybe it takes a few years of practice to get it just right. It really comes down to not putting too many plants between the posts, using some good, sturdy posts. And it seems like a lot of people use the wrong kind of string. Yes, the string we use isn't biodegradable and we have to clean it up, but it doesn't stretch and it's a lot more durable than say cotton string is. So use a high quality string. And I think the Florida weave will work for you. And the other thing is you just got to stay on top of adding new lines of string. These tomato plants have been in the ground here probably about two months and we've got eight lines of string. So that's a line of string a week. You got to come out here on a regular basis, add new lines of string. If you don't, things can get out of control on you and it makes it really hard to support these plants and actually do the weave. Now, another thing we've been getting asked a lot about lately is this situation right here where you have kind of some runners out from the bottom that are not contained within the florida weed we don't see it very much or at all over there on that roads to row we see it in quite a i don't know two or three places along the row here with our red snappers probably just because these plants are so bushy and so vigorous so a lot of people have been asking do you need to cut these off here or just leave them and let them run and i would say you know that's up to you We've obviously already got plenty of leaves here touching the ground. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Just let these puppies right here grow out. Now, if it's getting in the way of your cultivation or something like that, it's also not going to hurt the plants to come in here and see, get close to the plant there and cut that off. Kind of clean things up a little bit. So you can leave it or remove it. And mercy, we've got some beautiful little snappers right there. So I think these that are kind of shorter 
I'm just going to leave for the time being. They get way out here in the aisle. I'll probably cut them back. They're not going to hurt anything. So that was good. Now let's talk about the bad with some of these indeterminate and heirloom tomato varieties behind me. I'm beginning to realize these things are bad for my mental health. It's not good for me to come out here and see these things suffering like they are on a day-to-day -day basis. Some days they look okay, some days they look really rough and just wears on me because i put so much effort into trying to grow these varieties here compared to those red snappers where we really haven't done anything but just added new lines of strength but anyway let's see what we got now this is the time of day when these things look the worst about 5 30 in the afternoon they don't look as bad in the morning but as the day goes on as our weather works on a little bit they look pretty rough in the afternoon they'll recover a little bit by the morning so i don't have my list in front of me but i know what some of these varieties are these first two plants here don't look too bad they're curling up or the leaves are curling up a little bit right now this is a black beauty and i'm not really sure when these are supposed to be ready i don't know if you wait till they turn all the way purple or black there that's what i'm thinking and i don't think we're there yet but we're getting pretty close on some of those those are actually loaded up pretty good although this almost 90 degree day today seems to have worked on them pretty hard and then this variety beside it is one of the better looking indeterminate varieties we have i think this variety is called chocolate stripey and we can see the stripes on them now they don't look chocolate yet i'm guessing they'll turn at some point these plants are hanging in here or hanging in there relatively well compared to some of the others i'll show you in just a minute just kind of working our way on down these tomatoes aren't looking too bad these are some of those big wisconsin tomatoes sent to us by david in wisconsin got a little bit of blossom in rod on one there but good fruit production so far on those moving on down here this is a plant somebody gave me i think it was called blueberry or something like that it looked really good for a couple of weeks starting to fade pretty fast i think this is one of our turkey creek plants here it's starting to look pretty rough i think that one might be toast hoping those other two hang on there on the second row we've got more casualties definitely a casualty there one hanging on a little bit there dead one there few here hanging on a little bit these look really pretty not sure what this variety is without looking at my sheet but hopefully that plant makes it so we can try a few of those whatever variety this is that one's toast that one isn't far from being toast that one's toast these rose tomatoes here look okay this variety did fairly well for us last year we should at least get a few tomatoes off these before they suffer the fate of some of these others now i know the knee-jerk reaction thing to do is to try to guess or hypothesize or diagnose these plants and try to determine okay what disease or what bacteria has actually killed these plants but i don't think it's one specific thing we have treated these indeterminate plants the same as those determinate plants over there that are looking really great we've actually even babied these indeterminates more than we have those determinates so i don't think it's any of our growing practices could be a disease could be some type of pathogen i just think it's the weather down here and the fact that these varieties a lot of them don't show a lot of consistency from one plant to the next like some of the hybrids do now i've always said that these indeterminates here are our fun tomatoes we don't count on them thank goodness we don't and then the determinants over there are the ones we really count on but this is not really fun anymore coming out here every day and there being another dead plant out here i thought this year might be a little different seeing how this area right here gets some nice afternoon shade i thought that might help out a little bit but it really hasn't and i think the only other thing i could try would be maybe shade cloth and i'm just not sure i want to get into that so i'm kind of wavering right now as to whether i just want to ditch these types of tomatoes all together just not even grow them anymore or whether i want to maybe try it one more year with some shade cloth all right so that's enough bad news for one video now let's check on a couple of these varieties we have growing over here in the raised bed plot so let's start out with our Torangina cherry tomato plants, of which we've got two of in this little round raised bed here. 
I've also got a bunch of marigolds growing in here. I'm really liking this white swan variety. It's not exactly white, but it's not completely yellow either. It's a pretty color. I've been pruning those back a little bit so they don't outgrow my tomatoes too much. Well, these two plants are looking really, really good. Got good vigor on these. They are loaded up with cherry tomatoes. We'll get a ton of production off these. They're loading up from top to bottom. I have eaten a few of these already. Some of these way down in here are ripe. We may have one in there we can grab. So I found these two here. They're not completely orange yet. So they're not at peak ripeness yet. But a lot of times when I see them like this, I go ahead and give them a try because they're so good. Even if they're a little sour, not quite at peak maturity yet, still better than no tomatoes. Now over here in this other round raised bed, we've got quite an interesting situation. So the variety we have planted here is called Edox. And I've never grown it before, but I've seen, read great things about it, heard great things about it, so I had to give it a try. I've also got the white swan marigolds kind of bookending this round raised bed. So one of these Edox plants here looks really good. Looks just like that Torangina plant. This other plant here, doesn't look good at all. I won't say it doesn't look good, it just hasn't really done anything. It's just short, kind of stunted. And this is actually a plant that I replaced. So this is the second plant that's been in here. I don't know if it's something with that little localized spot in the round raised bed, or I don't know what's causing this little caged area right here to not grow out good. But at least this plant over here is looking really, really well. No ripe ones on here yet. We're starting to get some nice clusters in there, as you can see. And I hear these are very, very tasty. And then further back in the raised bed plot, we've got these three plants here. This is a determinate variety called Dixie Red. Now we planted these several weeks after we planted our Red Snapper and Roadster. So still a ways to go before we can kind of give these a fair evaluation. But so far, the plants are looking really good. This is what I want a determinate tomato plant to look like. Maybe getting a little bit of disease there on the bottom. They seem to be hanging in there pretty well. So I'm pretty hopeful for this variety here. Now, as far as determinate tomatoes go, I'm pretty partial to the varieties bred by Cicada. That would include varieties like Red Snapper, the Roadster you saw earlier. Bella Rosa is another great Cicada variety. They are really good at breeding some high quality determinate tomatoes. Now, this Dixie Red here is a Seminus variety. And I'm usually not a huge fan of some of the Seminus tomato varieties, but this may change my mind. We'll see what happens here. And if this one does pretty good with just these three plants, we may give it a bigger spot in the in-ground garden next year. And speaking of Seminus tomato varieties, let me share with you something I find quite hilarious and maybe something you didn't already know. So it seems to be the trend lately on YouTube to kind of create or fuel this narrative, this anti-big ag narrative, kind of shake your fist at the big guys. They're out to get us. They're trying to suppress what we're doing. They want to control the food supply, that whole story. And those same folks who want to shake their fist at Big Ag, if you go out in the garden, I bet you might find some better boy tomatoes. You might find some big beef tomatoes probably find some celebrity tomatoes. Do you know who breeds those three varieties? Same company that breeds this Dixie Red variety, Seminus. And if you didn't know, earlier this century, Seminus was bought by Monsanto, which was then later bought by Bayer. Now, I don't have an agenda as far as big ag goes. Either way, we don't get political on this channel. That's not what we're here to do. If Seminus has a good tomato variety that grows well in my garden, I'm gonna grow it. But you can't be out there talking all this stuff about big ag and then growing their varieties. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So grow what you want to grow, grow what you feel comfortable growing, support the companies that you want to support. But for those of you out there who like to get on your big ag conspiracy based soapbox, check yourself before you wreck yourself. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com. And if you want to see more than just those two little yellow Torangina tomatoes I had earlier, if you want to see a bunch of them, check out this video right here where we had three plants and we were harvesting a bucket every week or two. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.